Good evening. Welcome to Fellowship Church. And we are in White Plains, Maryland. For those of you that are online, welcome and glad you could make it. Glad you could join us. And those of you that are here, glad you could join us. Thank you, Father. So it's a society time of the year. This is actually, in the Old Testament scriptures, this is actually the biblical New Year. Uh, yep. So uh, and the time of the Passover is coming up, uh, which is something that early Christians also celebrated. And uh, my family and I also celebrate the Passover. Um, it's one of the one of the festivals. And uh, so the more you study it, you realize that it... It points to Jesus. It actually reveals a lot about God's salvation. And so we enjoy it. It's sort of a immersive learning, is what I would call it. It's something that uh, involves all the senses. So it's a, if you've never participated in one, um, if you have a chance to do so as a believing Christian and participate in a Christian Passover, uh, it's a worthwhile, in my opinion. Uh, that is the time of year that we're in, and so we know the resurrection is right after that. Amen? And so, yeah, <laughs> this is a good time to sing about the power of the blood. Amen? So, Father, prepare our hearts for worship right now. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Power, wonder work, and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you do this thing? Let's say again one more time. Would you do service? Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Yeah, there is power. Power, wonder work, and power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder work, and power in the precious blood of the Lamb. 
the precious blood of the Lamb. In the precious blood of the Lamb. Man, there is power. Amen. Amen. Glory. All right. This next song, so this is actually a song that was originally written in Spanish, so uh, I'm going to sing it first in English, but uh, this is actually, uh, I believe it was taken from a movie about the Ten Commandments, so but this is actually one of my family's favorite songs, so uh, and it's just about God's power, His delivering power, Amen. He threw in the sea, those who pursued them, the horse and his rider. He threw in the sea, he threw in the sea, those who pursued them, the horse and his rider. He threw in the sea, he threw in the sea, the chariots of Pharaoh. Hey, hey, la, 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 la. La 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 My father is God and I will exalt him my father is God exalted is he my father is God and I will exalt him my father is God exalted is he he threw in the sea the chariots of Pharaoh. Hey, hey, la 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 Echo a la mar, quien los perseguían, indeti caballo Echo a la mar, echo a la mar, quien los perseguían, indeti caballo Echo a la mar, echo a la mar Los carros del faraón. Hey, hey, la 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 and those who pursued them, the horse and his rider, he threw in the sea. Yes, he did. He threw in the sea. And those who pursued them, the horse and his rider, he threw in the sea. He threw in the sea. The chariots of Pharaoh. Hey, hey. La, 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 la. La 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 in the sea, the chariots of Pharaoh. Yes, you did, God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, bless the Lord. Isn't God good? Let's lift up a shout to the Lord real quick. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And of course, we, we do, we know that this is true, Father. 
that when Israel was standing at the bank of the Red Sea, and that, that song is from the Song of Moses, when Israel was standing at the bank of the Red Sea, there were mountains on both sides. It wasn't just some shallow swamp. They had nowhere to go. The sea was in front of them and Pharaoh was behind them. And you, with your awesome, mighty right hand, delivered them and made a way for them. And you destroyed Pharaoh, their, their pursuer, in the process. Amen? Amen. And so we thank you, and this is a time of year to, to remember that. And uh, we thank you that you're still the same God today that did those mighty things in the times past. Amen? Amen. So, Father, help our faith right now. Build our faith. And thank you for receiving our prayers. Thank you, Lord. All right, Brother Mark, if you want to come up. Amen. Amen. All right, Jim. Oh, it sounded like Bless my mic's Lord. turned on. It is, it is. Are we good with this thing here, sitting here? It's right where you want it? Not closer, not farther? I'm looking at the pastor while I'm asking him the question. Praise the Lord. The second song, that second song reminded me of, of two different scriptures. One in Proverbs somewhere or another that says that he who sets a trap will fall into it. Something along those lines. And then there's the other story in the, in the story of Esther where Mordecai and Oh, his, now the other name's getting cold on my tongue. Hayden and Mordecai, the one built the gallows for the other. Right, Hayden was the evil one. Hayden was the bad guy setting the gallows for Mordecai, and Hayden is the one that. <laughs> God turns things around. Hallelujah. And, and G, <laughs> praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so we are gathered together again for uh, praise and uh, Bible study and pray, uh, prayer time. And we have our weekly prayer list, a few add-ons. Let's see, Michelle Miller, which is oh, Renee's daughter. I don't seem to remember meeting Michelle Miller, okay. Okay, so uh, as usual, I try to, I don't want to think of a different, go ahead, Pastor. Oh, Renee, Miller's daughter, Renee Miller's daughter, Michelle, in need of prayer, and try to present the prayer list in, in, in something of a slight different way that it's not humdrum and same old, but uh, I think, you know, my, I lead uh, my grandsons in prayer nightly. And we may have the same prayer list, but, <clears throat> and sometimes, like last night, it's not so much asking God for certain things and of needs, but thanking, thanking him for having done so. And so we do thank God for continually ministering in these people's lives who are on the prayer list. Some may be new, many have been on there for some time. But we do thank and praise God for meeting their needs, uh, healing their bodies, minds, spirits, souls, healing relationships, providing for uh, housing and medical maintenance by way of insurance and that kind of thing. So let's go into prayer for Kimberly Harris, Betty Stepp, the Kaczewski family, Charles and the Newman family, Dory Hardesty, Ginger, comma, A.J. Conigan, Harry and Roxanne Burgers, <clears throat> the, Mal the Malberg family, also Pat's mother, Rose Younger, Robert Cole, Marissa Crown, Helen Cooper, Kim Belushi, Joseph, comma, Kelly and family, Joseph Owens, Tom Flaherty, Pastor's wife Donna Harris, Bob Wynn, who is still having leg problems, <clears throat> Bill McGonigal, Vincent Jane's families, Pastor Gary Snyder, Pam Hooper, 
Jeremy and Cass Heath, the Santucci family, Byron Roberts and Brooklyn, comma, Tyler, Glenda Verling's father, Greg, Barb Tuttle, Miss Kyle Ligian, Christopher Brashler for surgery, Vinnie Zorn, and Anne Marie, halfway through our two lists, Garnett Anderson and son Brian, Cheryl and Angelo Farr, the Larkin family, Melissa Seacrest for her health, Debbie Booher, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Dale Hay, Terry Apperson, uh, Linda Mandora, Ashley Enstrom, her son Aiden, and her new son, was that new son's name Jason? Ashley Enstrom has a new son. And Pastor's busy back there, so I can't have him remind me the new child's name. But Ashley looks real happy with pictures of the new baby on Facebook. Something about she can't get enough of him. <laughs> Aiden Sweeney, Jerry and Linda Muchel, Maria Jones and son Chuck Jones, Jean Mathail with cancer, Kathy Saul, Dick Clone with cancer, Michelle Sullivan, myself, Mark Paulus, and my family, thanking and praising God for his provisions and comfort. James Dorsey, Caleb Bailey, and others who are incarcerated, namely Cindy Levering and Michelle Park, and anyone else who you might be mindful of, incarcerated in prisons and jail and rehab centers, physical rehab centers, drug rehab centers, and the like. Uh, Michael Owen, former Prince George County police officer, has been three years waiting for trial, in jail waiting for trial. Bit of a complicated case, and I was just looking up on what's new, and they postponed the case again. I believe uh, former police officer Michael Owen, personally, I believe he's innocent. But I pray God's, I'm looking for the word, uh, to clear his name and get him out of jail. And it kind of looks like it would take a miracle to do it, but we have a, a miracle-working God. <clears throat> Carol DeHaven with cancer. Bill and Claudette McLaughlin. Jordan Schrader Hart. Jean Suit, that's Earl Goldsmith's daughter. Aaliyah and Steve Hall Sr. I see notations for our deepest condolences for Debbie Roberts and family and friends of Ed Roberts who went home to be with the Lord. And let's say our deepest condolences for the Janes family and the passing of wife and mother, Diane Janes. And for those who are in the military, Israel Remo, Tim Harmon, Jacob Houston, Ashley Baldo, Billy Heath, Anthony Baldo, Charlie Burke, Brandon Hardesty, Adam Corey, and, and law enforcement is Joseph Houston. And in prayer, Father, we do praise you. We love you. We, we do trust in you, Lord, that you call us into prayer and that you hear our prayers and that you answer our prayers. I have experienced a few recently, and I thank you for that. Thank you. And part of my, my thanks is for your you know, little ways of encouraging me, encouraging me that you are still involved and you got me covered and I'm not alone. We are not alone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bill? Well, praise the Lord that he's given us more time before his return, that uh, his mercies are fresh and new each morning, day by day. 
There's a song that's been playing through my mind, and it's called Ain't What It Used To Be. And that's going to be the title of tonight's message. It'll be Life Ain't What It Used To Be. <laughs> ain't what it used to be, ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Something like that. It was in the cartoons, or uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a wonderful thing to be able to um, to be able to believe in God, in the Son Jesus and benefit from the indwelling Holy Spirit. So this was a request as we continue on uh, a series kind of not through a book, which I like book by book, but following Christ in a straight, narrow way, a balanced and straight way. Uh, last time we said, over the valley of dry bones, who am I connected to? We're connected to Jesus. Much better. Tonight, this is a request from somebody that's online from Sunday, because we're covering Hebrews on Sunday morning. And I asked, well, I haven't decided what to do this Sunday. Does anyone have a special request? And you know, as we've been Christians for a while, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we know that how life changes. Our own lives and the environment around us, the culture, wherever we're at. So I'm going to address that. Life ain't the way it used to be. But not looking at before we came to Christ, but since we came to Christ. We talked to the songs, there's power in the blood. Well, we're going to talk about the transformative power of the blood. Because not just for salvation, or the beginning point, there's a continual salvation day by day until that complete, perfect salvation when we're in the presence of the Lord and when he reigns and there'll be no sin around. There'll be the enemy will be chained for a while. Well, anyways, let's look at the key verse I'm going to have. It's 1 Corinthians 13. And as, as we covered Hebrews, I, I want to just quote one verse about prayer. Let us come unto Christ, the great high priest, that he will get grace to help in time of need. We have needs daily. And it's needs in the little things to be sensitive to his promptings of the, his spirit. These needs are um, if we miss it, we regret it. And I was thinking of myself. There was a man that was in our house, a young man, and knew him from, since Japan, and we were talking, and then he left. And I had a chance to share Christ with him at my home. But he was going through some things that he committed suicide within a month. And I didn't share with them at that time. So occasionally the Holy Spirit brings that remembrance to me. And I think it's good because it prompts me, we got to be ready to share. And it's at any time. And uh, we don't want to miss those times, especially with the word of truth, the gospel. We can be nice and kind and good, yes, loving, all those things in character. But to share about the gospel needs to be part of it too. And, um, I, and it just made me imagine how Paul felt. He used to persecute the Christians, to kill them, to put them in prison. I know that stayed with him the rest of his life. Although he got forgiven, but those memories of 
especially our wickedness before we're saved, and sometimes that we miss opportunities since we've been saved. So let's look at this. It's going to be life ain't what it used to be and why. And there's some key verses that may speak to our hearts as it has mine. Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, this has to be Paul after he got saved. He's not talking about what he used to do in his old man. A child, we are all born again. You're a child. We're children. For a while, then we go through the stages, just as a plant that's planted of the incorruptible seed, as Peter tells us, we're born of incorruptible seed. It's, it's not going to spoil in the ground. It's, it's to grow. We just need to fertilize, to water it, to give it sun, care and attention. And, and we're told the instruction book how to do it. And it's, you know, we read different books, but this book <laughs> is what is the pure, undiluted feeding we need to grow that seed. Amen. There's a, sometimes you're with a, a group and they, they keep going, what book should we study next? You know, some book that accompanies for a small group study or whatever study and oh, let's do this one, let's do that one, let's do that one. But to get into, well, get into the book <laughs> and learn how to read it to that, appreciate it for what it says, literally, this is the best food. And, and sometimes it's hard to wean, wanting to go from this experience, that book, to ourselves and with others getting into the book. That's the best food. So as we're looking at this incorruptible seed that's in us and why things change through the time since we've been born again. First, we want to look at, if I want to put a three-point message, it would be God, Paul, and I. But it's not, it's nine points, so we'll spread them out. Let's first talk about God, the Father. He never changes since he created everything since the battle in heaven and Lucifer was cast down to earth and it was dark over the waters. Six days creation, the seventh day he rested, not because he was tired, but because he was refreshed. Resting is refreshing in the Lord. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Times of refreshing shall come for all people. We learn from the Old Testament, and God's the same, Malachi 3.1, I change not. Although he was working differently at different times, now we're in the New Testament in the church age. So God never changes. A true believer will have no problem, God doesn't change. He's immutable, unchangeable. He has a plan and purpose and wants us to glorify him, all creation. As we read in Revelation 4 and 5. What else? Second, Jesus never changes. His son, although he doesn't do nothing except what the Father tells him to do, what the Father gives him the power to do, he does in God's time. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's no problem with that. Shouldn't it be with recognizing they don't change, the Father and the Son. Now, what about the Holy Spirit? There's no verses like that about the Holy Spirit. We don't need verses because the Holy Spirit, that's the part of God, of really of Jesus, I should say, but, but they're one with the Holy Spirit. So that's the part that comes to indwell us, live in us, and not to leave 
to stay, and it never changes because God doesn't change, Jesus doesn't change, and without either of them, there'd be no Holy Spirit. There's just none of this religion of Christianity would exist without these three things that don't change. Although they are available to everybody today, not just one nation, to all nations. Not just through the law of Moses, but something much better than the law of Moses. The law of the liberty of the Spirit in Christ. The law of love. So this Spirit in us doesn't change. Well, now we're going to look at agreeing that, understanding that. Let's look at the second part, the life of the Apostle Paul. Paul was uh, called an apostle out of due time, the least of the apostles. God had a special purpose for him. He was 14 years before he went on his first missionary journey, before they ordained him to send him out. He spent three years in Arabia, the desert, Galatians says, and the Lord taught him himself. He had a special calling, special purpose. Imagine the... That's why he calls Jesus Christ Jesus, because he's seen him as the resurrected Christ. He never seen him or was with him. He heard about him when he was a physical body. Jesus, as Jesus, a man. But he knew him as the Christ, the anointed one, the resurrected Christ. Taught him personally for a special purpose. And that was a mysteries of the, of the church, of the times we're in. Paul was mature. His example and his doctrine, his teachings were mature. He didn't grow in that. He was prepared through the teachings directly with Jesus Christ and through times of preparation that first 14 years before he even went out. And when he wrote, it, was, it wasn't even Paul, the inspiration that he wrote his 14 letters. They were, God just used them to speak through. Holy men were moved by the Holy Spirit as, um, to write down the scriptures. To Timothy, I said it wrong or out of context. But how you believe in the inspiration of the scriptures, how high is your view of that inspiration? Is it really high? Is it medium? It can be this or that, or is it a low interpretation? You mix philosophies, traditions. Um, I, I really believe the higher it is, the better. Amen. The more literal you take that this book is inspired, and you have no need of others, although they may help at times, but this book is the one that's the transformative power. And Paul, that's what his life was about, but he wasn't proud with all of his intelligence, all of his gifts, his special place, he never bragged about it. He even put when he said, I knew a man that went to heaven as a third person. He wouldn't say it himself. And, and that's really humility. Many other examples from his life. Now we're going to get to an I and you, each believer. Okay, let's see. We have Paul as an example, but before we go to us, there was also Peter and John and all the apostles and other ones, Timothy. What about them? Well, they had different callings. They aren't known as much. Some of the apostles we hear nothing about. So even Peter says some of Paul's doctrines are difficult, hard to understand, and some wrestle with them to their own destruction. And I think he's really talking about Hebrews, mostly. That, that, that is a hard book to understand. But it is understandable. He, and then John, why isn't John mentioned that much? You know, only a little bit, but I mean, 1, 2, and 3 John and, and Revelation, God had a special plan and purpose. 
that was really revealed at the end of his life, after the temple was destroyed, and those letters were written. He, he didn't die where most of the others died, were martyred uh, by the time of the 70 AD destruction of the temple by Nero. What else about these two you can re relate? Oh yeah, Peter. I go back to that. We think, I like to relate with Peter. I always put my foot in my mouth. But yes, we can all say some may relate more with John, some with Paul, some with Peter, some with um, one of the lesser known apostles, some with Doubting Thomas. But Peter, at the end of his life, he wrote one and two Peter, especially two Peter. He's ready to die. And we see how he matured in the faith, that transformative power. Wherever we are in our personality, our character, our gifts, that maturing is a process that is God's design. So we read, and that'll be the very end, the end game. Peter caught it very well. It expressed differently, but still, they were, that brings unity. The closer we draw to Christ and walk with him, the more united we are with one another. Because Christianity is, is that type of religion. Okay, let's look at the changes. Mankind changes. We know that from however long we have lived. Unless you're a young person, you think the whole world is only this what we know as an experience. We know cultures, nations, kings rise, kings are lowered, famines come, prosperity comes, blessings, cursings. Things change through time. So that's continually changing. And can we do anything about that? No. Normally not. Because that's the big picture, the big plan. We're only little specks, each person, in that overall timeline of eternity. We're in time, and in our time and space where we are. So mankind's going to change and will always change. Then we look at our own selves. I changed how I change. I didn't understand all the things of the Christian faith. Of course not. Nobody does. But it was, I had my first love. And I was a baby. And you know when you're a baby, when your parents, I think everyone here has had children, or many, is that they need special care and attention as a child, as a baby. And as they grow up, it's less and less. But the same way with our Father in Heaven, when we're a spiritual baby, things happen a, a unique way that should happen then as a baby. The feeding, the clothing, the attention. Do you think when we're 30 years old, do you, uh, keep your hands away from the, the stove. Don't walk across the street. Uh, these things that we tell, or as they get older, they can understand language, but even at first, we don't even understand language. <laughs> we just, the, the instincts of crying, of knowing there's a need for food, we have to use a restroom and it's uncomfortable. But we're the same way when we're spiritual babies, yet we have a first love. There's a freedom, there's a newness. They're both happening at the same time. I believe we go through the, our deliverance from the Red Sea, crossing that Red Sea, the bondage of slavery, of sin, represents an Old Testament as a nation. Us today, it's individuals and the, within the church, that truth, we're delivered from that. Slavery, the bondage of sin, that's a, a wonderful I don't like using the word type, but uh, 
shadow or picture. Yes. Is it like a baptism? That's, that, that's there too. Baptism can be right away. But we may not understand all that it means. Hey, my old man has died with Christ and to the power of the resurrection working in us. But yes, that follows. Oh, that too, yes. And if we get saved, we can't go back to the old way. We won't want to, and we won't. We'll be miserable, most miserable. But we know Israel wanted to, and what happened because of their unbelief? The whole generation died off in the desert. That's in Hebrews 4. They didn't enter into God's rest because of unbelief. And I, I believe that's a lesson for you can come to church, be it some, but you never really believe. You're there with the truth. You see miracles. You, you see things happen. You experience the truth, the gospel, but somehow it, you still don't believe. That's, that was in Hebrews 4. But let's look at 2 Corinthians 3, 17 to 18. I think that's a beautiful verse very clear about what happens in that, how do I change? Because I really need to change appropriately to the age, the time I've been with the Lord. Keep changing. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Now, the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding is in a glass, the glory of the Lord. You're looking in the mirror and see the glory of the Lord. Are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And that's looking in the mirror, you see Jesus, and you see yourself, but you look really good at first when you're a babe, but as you can recognize and see how Christ really looks, a more clear picture, like a hologram, you get more of the pixels put in there, it becomes more bright, more clear. That's through time. And being in the scripture, you see how Christ, more of how he is, our 14 years, like before Paul was called, to, to, to learn the doctrines, to learn the the um, temptations and trials and the things we go through in this body, in this life. So that transformation, this captures it perfectly. We're changed the same from image, same image from glory to glory. From our own glory or goodness, which is not, but to his glory. His glory, we say glory, glory to God, Glory, hallelujah. Glory, majesty, honor, power. That belongs to God. And when we get in the, we don't want to get in the way. Unless we get in the way, less of us, more of him. Wow, things just work out so smoothly. Much better. So I change, and the other is 1 John 2, 12 to 14, where uh, John says the same thing, but in a different way. And we may say different things, but we're really saying, I shouldn't say the same things. We may say the same thing in different ways, such as Pastor Marvel, when he preaches and explains something, he may explain it different to me, but it's the same thing if we believe the same. We have anyone, we present it or understand and, and express it a little differently, but it's going to be the same truth, the same gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm really sort of, I'm following your notes now up here, mm -hmm. except I made one mistake, it says I changed. When I looked at 1 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18, oh. <laughs> I was going to say it, it's it, it, it hitting on the same thing. Right? Oh, it could, wow, that would be a miracle. Let's see what that says. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. And that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And he's just talking about life and how we, the devil wants to change. <clears throat> if any man defile the temple, <clears throat> a 
Yeah, I'll read it out for everyone here. I'll read it out for at YouTube. So, okay, that's good. Well, let's. Li I'm gonna go over as Pastor Marvin said. One Corinthians three sixteen to seventeen eighteen. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? The these are people that have been Christians for a while. They should not be babes no more. Where the first part of chapter three verse one. He says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So that goes right along with it. But then, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall, God shall destroy. Remember, we take communion, and sometimes people get sick and weakly, and some even die. They don't take it worthily. That's part of it. God is drawing us to walk with him, a holy life and close, many, many ways and powerfully. Let us submit ourselves to it through the word, through each other, through the lead, leaders in the church. Um, the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. We can deceive ourselves. And others can deceive us too, but first, deceiving ourselves. That's where pride gets in, self. Um, in many different ways, the world, the enemy. If any man among you seems to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So the wisdom of God confounds those that are wise in this world's eyes, those that have a lot of ability and intelligence. I was, I mean, these people, I was just with one uh, the other day, and you can tell they're so intelligent and deal with issues so clearly and quickly. Gifted mind. But where is God in that? Where is Jesus in the scriptures? And, and they, they rightfully own. They, they prosper and they have a lot. and It's theirs because they have earned it. They work hard. But yet, they're without the things, the riches of, in Christ Jesus, the eternal things. That's a, why God is, says he's not chosen many of the wise, the strong, but the simple, the foolish things of the world. And I admit, I'm one of those things. <laughs> and by God's grace, that change, uh, which I say, I change. And we can each should be saying that, I change. So these verses go good together. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then as each one of us changes, we change. Because we don't change by ourselves. We affect others as we change. In our own families, in our community, where we work, where we go to school, there's going to be an effect. And as more, that's what it really is, revival. <laughs> it's that simple. But it's, it has to be, we can't pray it in, we can't praise it in. It's that humility at the foot of the cross, humbling ourselves, seeking him personally, individually. And as we each get um, closer to the Lord and, and just where we should be. And then I'm going to bring us back, we're the ones that change, to Joel. Let's look at the book of Joel in the Old Testament where we learn things, right? The Old Testament is for three things. For, it's for, written for our learning, Romans 15, 4. It's written that we may be admonished, 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 6, where it talks, look at the people in the, the desert, the wilderness, what happened to them. Be admonished. Uh, it spoke of that in Hebrews 4, uh, who was the first martyr? Stephen. You look, a third of his message, which was a full, big paragraph, is about their time in the wilderness. Learn from that. And, and then the third thing, shadows. Shadows of things to come. Because we didn't look at the shadow and see it, but we don't talk to the shadow, we talk face to face, like this looking in the glass and we see the glory of Christ. We don't look at his shadow. We can look at his face to face in the New Testament, being transformed from glory to glory. So we're going to Joel, chapter 2, verse 25. We just went over this book in the daily quiet time. It was a great blessing. 
and really every book's been blessing since I've been retired and had time to get in the Word and serve the Lord and pray more. There's a time for everything, and this time is for me. I praise the Lord. Um, chapter 2, verse 25. You know, it's written to the nation Israel. We don't want to replace this applies to the church, even today, what's written in Joel. Because it's written to Israel as a nation, very clear. And looking back at that time, the judgment coming by the Babylonians, but also it's looking toward the time of the tribulation period, but before the return of Christ. Israel is going to come back as a key player. We're in between that time. So don't, let's not try to apply these things, except I think this is a lesson we can learn from what's written by the prophet Joel. Chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer wood, my great army which I sent among you. God sent all these things, the plagues, one after another to that land because of their sin. God sent them. And, but now he's telling them, giving them hope as a nation. He's going to bless them. And he says, I, all those years you lost, because all those grasshoppers and those different forms of it came in and destroyed everything. God will restore the time, the years that were lost. That was a promise to the nation. And I see that as a promise to us today as believers. If we have gone astray, if we have got off course, humble ourselves, repent, as letters to the seven churches says, <laughs> and, and draw close and stay close to the Lord. Commit yourself to that. The Lord will restore even those years. So while we have breath in life, if we've gotten off a little in our own way, our own thing, um, the Lord will restore it and refresh us just like new. As if we never, he is forgiveness. What does he talk about? The sure mercies of David in one of the letters. Why David does he say the sure mercies? Because David sinned so greatly, but yet he repented. And the Lord, he had to pay the consequences. Yes, that's what we learn. Fear God. I don't want to pay those consequences for myself, for my family, for whatever position I'm in. David was for the nation that had severe consequences. But still the Lord forgave him and forgot it. And he was cleansed, made white as wool. Not as an excuse, but that's the way it works. We can't use David as an excuse for sin. We use it to learn from his life. Um, to fear the Lord. So the, the Joel 2.25, the next step. So thinking, what's your next step in your life? Where are you? And I'm going to go to the right side a little bit. I cover this little by little as we go through this series is we have a God squad that's looking for us, out for us. They're commanding officers. When you've been in the military, you know a commanding officer, especially on a ship, has control of everything. And what they say, they're like God for when they're out in the sea and they have no other, the leader, although it's temporary and weak. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a perfect leader and strong. And he's a squad leader. So we put this squad, um, the first fire team, four people, about the word. The second one I want to go into a little bit tonight, the application. And we can obey or disobey the word. To disobey it for a believer <laughs> is uncomfortable. And the uh, uh, unbeliever can disobey it all the time. It doesn't affect them as it used to us before we were saved. We enjoy the things that were disobedient to the Lord. But now that we're, we're, we're born again with that incorruptible seed, he's given us that life where what we used to hate, we love, and we love, we, we hate, we, we used to love. <laughs> we can put it that way. But there's first, this fire team, there's four people in it. One with automatic riflemen, um, two with automatic rifles, than the regular M16. The first, when we hear the word of God, it's going to do one of three things. And this is my own creation, so, you know, I take 
I take accountability. <laughs> how true it is, how it works. Okay, the word of God will first comfort us. It should. Because, and confirm, hey, I'm doing what's right, praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, it will comfort and confirm. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us, our advocate. One of the things of the Holy Spirit come along, it's in us, yes, but comes alongside the comfort to, to aid us, to lead us, the Spirit, to be led of the Spirit. Or it will convict us where we need to confess the sin. The blood of Christ will cleanse us, 1 John 1, 9. So, or it may challenge us to, you know, the Christian life isn't static. You read through 1 and 2 Thessalonians, they were a, a, a good church, they were growing in Christ, and over and over you see more and more, abounding. This is the way of the Christian life, and, and the growth, going from a baby to a child, a young man, and a father, spiritually. And unless we have, well, we won't go there. I say mental hand, you know, some mentally they stops us from doing that, we're going to see a change over time. We change. I change. We change. Um, the next step. So what is your next step? Where are you now? Let's look at Peter's vision of the end game. We all got to see the end, too. There's an end game, a purpose why we're doing this. And, I, and Peter expresses it very well, and it has to do with crowns and rewards. Um, to give back to the Lord. To, um, but it isn't just then. It's the joy he gives, the fullness of life in this body in our times. 2 Peter 3, after Hebrews 1 and 2 Peter. And I'll read 11 to 18, and that'll be the, pretty much the close of tonight's life ain't what it used to be. And to answer the person's question, they used to have, when he was first saved, oh, God used to speak to me. I had these dreams or these visions and in his first love when he's a babe. And I can answer that because I went through it myself. As a baby, God has his hand on you in a special way because you need it. And he'll speak to you. He'll, he'll bring money to you if you're poor. Or he'll bring different things. And he gets you on the right path. And, and these things, he speaks to us in different ways at different times. And even in the early church, going back to 1 Corinthians, when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part will be done away. Perfect is the scripture. Not the return of Christ. We know that's perfect, but we want some in, in this life, which Paul experienced and kept experiencing by being humble. So 2 Peter 3.11 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, all that we see around us, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting to the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? That's when there'll be a new heaven and new earth after that. He's talking to very end, after the thousand-year reign of Christ. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, Look for a new heaven and a new earth. Well, it goes right into it. Didn't have to explain it. He goes right into it. Peter understood these things. Wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, are you looking for these things? Amen. Amen. Yes. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, we can be found with spot and blemish. 
but he wants us to be found without spot, without blemish. What does that mean? When we sin, we create blemishes, and we let it grow and continue, but the blood cleanses us. It means God wants, Jesus wants us to earn crowns and rewards, to enjoy him in this life and forever. So, spots and blemishes, to understand that, and found of him in peace, that refreshing peace that the world cannot give. If we feel troubled or disturbed, why is it? God, tell, show me. He'll show you. Because he wants us to be people of peace that make peace, and we experience the peace ourselves. 15. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. His suffering on and just when he was on earth and in the cross. He isn't suffering now, but it's for our salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you. He had a special wisdom. Also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye, therefore, beloved, seeing that ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Not fall from salvation. Steadfast, established, grounded, firm, and staying there whatever stage you are in your life, in your spiritual walk with the Lord. In the last verse, of course, he doesn't finish like Paul does. May the grace of the Lord be with you. Different. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Uh, if life is, ain't what it used to be and you don't feel you're in the center of God's will right now in your life, find out why. Pray about it. Fast about it. Seek the Lord. We each can be. And um, we, uh, it's, there's no better blessing on this earth no matter what financial situation, what trials we're going through. That's the best place we can be. Well, praise the Lord. I'll finish in a prayer. Be sure the men, if there are anybody, prayer uh, breakfast tomorrow at Bob Evans, 8.30. Is it at 8 now or 8.30? 8. Move to 8. Okay. <laughs> Good. And uh, Sunday service, of course, be praying for that. That's um, Sunday school, the service, everything that happens. Yes? Oh, great. A special speaker for this Sunday, uh, Wendell Carter. Calder. Calder. Pray for that. And his, we always uh, pray for Pastor Marvin each Sunday. Okay. Well, let's uh, finish in prayer. Lord God, we do thank you that things ain't what they used to be. And for whatever reason, that they may be now in our lives. You may restore the years the locusts have eaten as we've gone if we have lost time and ways and drawing close to you, each one of us personally, closer and closer, more and more, until that glorious day. Be with us the rest of this night, the ones that hear and listen to, and as you bring us together uh, this Sunday especially, and with a special speaker. Lift them up now, even as he prepares a message. What is your will to be spoken through it for us here? In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well,